Hello everyone, it's Maria here uh, from Peppley Rose Paper Crafting. Uh, today I'm going to be doing a video of my favourite crafty things. Uh, this video is coming about because I tend to get a lot of questions from my viewers regarding stuff that I use that are not necessarily Stampin' Up! So if there are any of you out there that are you know, seasoned card makers or most importantly like beginners and you don't know where to start, I reckon that these kind of um, stuff that I'm going to show you will be very helpful for your crafting. So in no particular order, <laughs> I'm going to start off with my favourite inks. I love Versamark. You can do beautiful techniques with it. I've had this pad, ink pad for a very, very long time, nearly 10 years. And um, it works beautifully for embossing, heat embossing. I absolutely love it. So I reckon Versamark is um, a, you know, the, a must. You have to have that in your crafty collection. Also, Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. This inks up beautifully. And most importantly, it, fade, it resists um, fading and it dries really quick. So if you let this dry, you can actually do a little bit of watercolour with it as well, but not on watercolour paper, but on regular cardstock. You can do just a tiny bit of ink blending with that using your, um, you know, uh, aqua painter or a paintbrush, but with just a tiny amount of water. And that's another one of my favourite things is this aqua painter. You have a nice... Um, brush and you have a barrel and you can fill that up with water so that's another one of my favorite things that I think are, are really good to have in your collection these can be bought through Stampin Up as well um, but as I said in my video I'm going to show you things from a variety of sources not just Stampin Up but um, I just wanted to let you know too that anything that I show you today has been bought by me nothing is given to me no company approaches me to um, you know, show stuff or, or to uh, coerce me in any way. This is my own um, doing, basically. So whatever I show is what I've personally bought and what I've personally used and like and recommend. So that's up to you. The next thing I want to show are my beloved blender pens. I absolutely love these blender pens. You can buy them in a pack of three from Stampin' Up. They are wonderful with your ink pads you can also use them with markers as well water-based markers not not alcohol markers but and uh, what I love about them the most is you can use them with watercolor pencils and um, this is one I get questions a lot with I love the Faber Castell they're called Albrecht Dura watercolor pencils I got the one that's got hundred and twenty pencils in it. Uh, when you open it up, it has a, a lovely array of colours and it comes in like trays. So you've got these little strings, you pull up the trays, take that away and you have three rows and um, you've got a variety of colours there that will last you a long time. What I love about the watercolour pencils is you can use them with your aqua painter you can use them also with your blender pens on say plain whisper white cardstock with Stampin' Up or you can use um, Nina Solar White if you wish I think they work very well um, I'm not showing alcohol markers because I don't have any I only have one Copic marker that I bought a long time ago um, and I find that watercolor pencils really are the most economic way of you know, colouring uh, without spending the earth. And the good thing about watercolour pencils is, is you can layer colours on top of each other and create different shades using the one pencil. So that's why I find using watercolour pencils for colouring the best for me. Um, but it's an individual thing. Everyone has their own preference. So it's up to you what you want to do with that. But I really love using my watercolour pencils. Uh, the only problem with watercolour pencils is, is that once you've painted it, you know, when you've done your colouring or painting, um, if you expose it to water, it will react. However, there is a product out there that will stop this from happening. And I'll just bring it over and I forgot. Um, it's the Ranger 
Distress Microglaze. This stuff is amazing. What you do with this, it kind of looks like Vaseline on the inside. But basically what it does is, um, and I'll read you what it says on here because so, they say it better than I do. This um, Tim Holtz Distress Microglaze is the ideal water resistant sealer for distress inks, markers, stains, paint and more on porous surfaces. So, um, yeah, so you can use this on your cardstock, on your watercolour paper. And what you can use is, you can use one of these uh, Ranger, dis um, what's it called? I forgot what they're called. Mini, um, <laughs> round mini ink blending tool. <laughs> um, you can get a sponge, so like this, and you can pick one up. All right, and they've got like a Velcro, it's got like a Velcro kind of a, a thing to it there. And you can attach it on like that. You can put it into your micro distress glaze and just go over very lightly over your colored images and then you're able to um, seal your watercolored images and coloring and it'll become water resistant and it won't run. So I think this is a fantastic thing to have and it's, you know, it's pretty inexpensive. It's not too bad. Um, and a one, another one of my favorite crafty things that I have used quite a lot in my videos is this uh, mini ink blending tool. You get it in a packet of two and then you can buy, it comes with four uh, little round ink pads and then you can buy these in a packet of 20. I think they come in a packet of 20, yes. And they're from Ranger. I highly recommend these as well if you're ink blending large areas. So I quite like those and what I have done with these is um, I have my ink colors so I'm using mainly Stampin' Up but I get like I've got like what's it called um, transparency sheet or you can use laminated sheet just put it through the laminator and it gives you a bit of heft and then you put a little piece of the loop part of the velcro and then you stick each individual um, foam pad on there and you can have all your colors with just two ink blending tools or you can go out and buy however many ink blending tools and the ink pad already on there ready to go it's up to you but I personally can't afford that but this is the velcro I use this is the really heavy duty stuff so what I do is just cut bits of it off and just stick it on here and it works great I quite like this system and it's inexpensive and I got the container from a dollar shop so it was pretty good so those are my favorite crafty things for this at the moment I've got more <laughs> so bear with me it's going to be a big long one in terms of stamp positioning tools I have two that I love Stamparatus for me is fantastic and this is in no particular order I like the size of the Stamparatus I think it's a good size so I was thinking of investing in a you know a mini Misty or a mini Tim Holtz stamp platform but this is a good size this is a 7x7 seven seven. it has uh, two plates just bring it, anyway it's got two plates I'm not going to bring it out because it's just going to take too much time and so you can have one plate here one plate there and you can stamp a, a project multiple times without even having to take them off the plates also you can switch it around and then it gives you four stamping surfaces so it's really really good I have this product on here for my old style uh, cling stamps that don't cling very well from Stampin' Up and this is called cling film clear grip I'll just get the packet I forgot to bring it over um, it's called clear grip I found this in the haberdashery store this is used under rulers to stop the rulers from slipping it is completely um, adhesive free it just clings so it's a cling on vinyl I find that works really well with the older style stamps um, and if you've seen me use this in videos so I'm not going to go through that rim roll but I just wanted to let you know this is one of my favorite crafty things in the haberdashery section and um, and I love the Stamparatus not because I sell it but because it is a fantastic cool tool and a game changer what I also love is the fact that it has bar magnets as well and they're quite strong so 
yeah, so that's my favourite tool, uh, stamping tool for smaller projects, for larger projects. I love my Tim Holtz stamp platform. I love this thing. <laughs> I still use it. Um, it comes with two round magnets and I think it's a fabulous tool. Um, and it's got a removable lid which you just take off here, turn it around and you can use it for both rubber and clear stamps as well. This, um, yeah, I, I absolutely love it. So between the two stamp platforms, I prefer the, the Stamp Artist and the Tim Holtz one. I absolutely love them. And what I like to use with them as well is the Misty Creative Corners. These are fabulous. I didn't think I'll need them, but I shelled out and bought some. Um, you can buy them in any of the crafting stores here in Australia. So they are widely available and they're not overly expensive. What I love about these creative corners is if you want to stamp something, for example, right here, but you, you need the stamp to go over the entire um, part there, you get one of these corners. So I'll just get one of these corners and you stick that in the corner and it's got magnets. So stick it in the corner then you can turn that around and your stamp can then go right across or you can do nice diagonals close to the corner so that's very good and also you can use two of them so you can bring out the corner even more and then it allows you to have a very um, accurate way and a bigger distance of stamping so i quite like these misty creative corners in actual fact they're nothing special they're just triangles you can find in a geometry set and um, the rulers you can use this for your sentiments and line it up across this works well in the misty because i do have the misty tool but it's not my favorite tool because of the price um yes yeah, so this works well with the misty and also it works well with the Tim Holtz stamp platform and they also work well with the uh, Stamparatus as well. I've tried them in all of them and they all work well with all of them. So yeah, I like my Tim Holtz stamp platform as for the larger one. I think it's beautiful and it's got the nice open edges so you can use it for larger projects. So I'm really happy with that. And yeah, so that's it for now for the stamp positioning tools. We'll get onto the trimmers because I think there's something that's look, there's no particular trimmer that's perfect, I don't think. So I've got about three trimmers, but I will show you the two that are my absolute favorite. I love the Tim Holtz eight and a half inch uh, guillotine cutter. This cuts beautifully and especially it's especially good for card makers. I really love this thing. If you can see, you can put it in there. It's got nice quarter inches uh, measurements, which is great. So it cuts like butter. It cuts beautifully and straight and, and everything. So this cutter is amazing and it's not overly expensive. I think it's about $35 something like that anyway i don't remember 100 percent, but it is a fantastic trimmer it's especially good for card makers the only problem i have with it it doesn't go for the full 12 inches and i wished that this would have uh, a little um an arm to go out to 12 inches but other than that i think this trimmer is fantastic i absolutely love it i think it's the best one out of the tim holtz range i think it's a good good trimmer I also love my Stampin' Up! trimmer. Now, there have been issues with the blades dulling quickly and what have you. However, I have found a way, after seeing another demonstrator's video of using WD-40, I found out that that particular WD-40 is not safe for plastic. So I found a WD-40 that is actually safe to use on plastic. It's this one here. It's a silicon lubricant high performance and it's for use on metal, plastic, rubber and wood. And that's exactly what you need. Now I use this to clean my track 
and my blade. And what I have found is that the blade lasts a lot longer. So what gives the, this, you know, the really horrible cuts on this trimmer is the fact that the, the track inside gets uh, lint and dirt. So the way that I clean it, and I find that it works very well, is I use some WD-40 on a, um, a kitchen towel. So what you do is you spray a little bit of it, just shake the can, and then just spray a little bit of it, just a tiny amount, see that? That's all you need. And then this, this particular WD-40 has a lovely scent. It's like lemony. <laughs> so I use one of these um, strips of cardstock you may have lying around. I just put it in there. Right. So, so I've put it in there. And I have the cardstock right in there. And then what I do with that is I put it in the track. I put it in the track. Hang on, I've just got to make sure I make sure it's nice and thin, otherwise it won't fit. Make sure it's in the track, and then I just go like that and clean off any um, lint. Okay. Now I've done this before, but I'll do it again. And as you can see there, see that it it clears up. A lot of the dirt that's inside because sometimes it's the dirt that causes all of the problems with cutting accurately then I find that with the blade I give that a wipe with there as well and that lubricates that as well because it's plastic and metal as if you can see that right also do the same with my my scorer and then I use this same section here and just clean on the tracks of this trimmer and down here too okay just give it a clean and then because it's a lubricant it makes all the dirt just not stick and you can get rid of also sticky any sticky bits on this trimmer and this I did this treatment a few weeks ago and this trimmer has cut beautifully since so I want to thank, I think it was Frenchie Stamps, she recommended using WD-40 to clean your trimmer and it also increases the longevity of your blades and in all honesty this has been really good to me and it glides so nicely like that that it's, you know, it just works better. It works so much better. Such an easy trick. So I'll show you with a piece of, I've got some scrap cardstock that just didn't work out for me. So I'll show you the edge of that because I used um, the other trimmer. But I'll use this one. And ha that is the edge now of that one. So it is actually very good edge. It's not bad at all. It's cut well. So I'm, I'm really pleased with that. It has increased the longevity of my blades by doing that. And not only that, but I love the way this trimmer works. I love that the measurements are on here. So you can see exactly where your piece of cardstock goes. So it's got the inches and the centimetres all there. So when you're positioning your paper, it's very accurate. The cuts are straight because there's not a lot of movement with the blade. As you can see, I can't move it much. So the cuts are dead straight. So I'll do another cut to show you how straight it is. And there's no wobbly bits, nothing. See that? It is dead, dead straight. And here's on the piece of cardstock there. So, and then in between cleaning, I just do that. And the stuff just comes right off all the lint. So in order for this trimmer to cut well, you do have to clean the tracks and keep this clean. And in that way, it increases the longevity of your trimmer. I, I quite like this. My other favourite things, so we'll get away from the trimmers now, <laughs> I'm going on to dies. Now these dies are Stampin' Up! dies and, um, and embossing folders, however you can, you know, um, you can substitute them with other brands that have similar things too. So I love stitched rectangle shaped dies. Stampin' Up! only just brought them in, but I know that uh, Lawn Fawn, my favourite things, etc., 
they have um, stamps already, I mean, dies that are stitched. I love the stitched rectangles. You can't go wrong with those. Whichever brand you get, I think they're great to have in your collection. An alphabet die set is awesome as well. Just generic. These are big ones. I'd like a smaller set. Um, so, yeah, always I think it's good to invest in letter dies, an alphabet die. I think they're, they're awesome. They're good to have. Stitch shape framelits, um, a given stitched. Ovals, squares and triangles. I'm sure there are other shapes out there from different companies as well. I think they're great to have in your crafting arsenal. Layering circles, framelits. Okay, that's cool. You have some scallops and some circles. It same goes with your squares and your ovals as well. I love them. I can't do without them and I use them all the time. Um, my favourite embossing folder of all time is the Subtle Dynamic Textured Embossing Folder by Stampin' Up. It gives a beautiful, that's the texture, um, and it's like basil cardstock. If you like basil cardstock but don't have access to it, then I reckon this is a great um, alternative. Getting this um, embossing folder is a must, I think. And I also love the Pine Wood Planks Dynamic Embossing Folder. These are very basic, okay, but I feel that they can be used for so much more and I absolutely love them. So I highly recommend these two embossing folders, not because I sell them, but I think they're a fabulous addition to your crafting uh, supplies. I think they're wonderful. And of course, die cutting machine, you cannot go wrong with the Big Shot. I love the Big Shot. It's my favorite die cutting machine. I have a cuddle bug as well, but I like my Big Shot and I bought this before I became a demonstrator. Uh, I only wish that the pink, I have to say, is a bit annoying. Even though it looks kind of nice, it does get dirty. So just as a warning. So yeah, but the Big Shot itself, I think is the best, one of the best die cutting machines. I love it. I'm going to also recommend an electronic machine, which I can't bring over here, but it is the Silhouette Cameo. I absolutely love that thing. I don't know how many times I've used it because I also do work on consignment for customers as well. So I do invitations as well on the side, as well as my Stampin' Up! business and other work too. So um, yeah, I really love my Silhouette Cameo. I think it's one of the best machines on the market. Absolutely love it. The next crafty thing I love is the Glossy Accents. This is just a brand new packet that I haven't opened yet, but this is from Ranger. I love Ranger products, even though I'm a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. I don't care. I use products from everywhere. I don't discriminate. <laughs> um, as well as, you know, if, if there are people watching my YouTube videos and I'm always, you know, I like my Stampin' Up! product too, don't get me wrong. I think Stampin' Up! do a wonderful job with their stamps and their, their papers are just beautiful. I love their inks and I love their cardstock. Um, you know, I think with crafting, you should do what makes you happy, what you can afford as well. And what I love about Stampin' Up! is it gave me the opportunity to buy my supplies a little cheaper. In Australia, crafting supplies are expensive. There is no doubt about it. So. I think when it comes to stamps and, and things like that, each to their own. I, I'm a fan of Alta New Stamps. I'm going to say that right out. Alta New Stamps, Lawn Fawn, uh, My Favourite Things, Ellen Hudson, um, Mama Elephant, all these beautiful oh, hero arts. There are so many fantastic stamp companies. You buy what you like. I don't discriminate and I don't like it either when others try and force you down a certain path. Don't do it. Do what makes you happy and that's all there is to it. So I love my glossy accents. I think they, they do a beautiful job with, you know, um, making nice embellishments. And it's also a glue too. It's really good. And I love that glossy finish. So I love my glossy accents. <laughs> um, I love my chamois. I keep mine in a container. This is from a Ferrero Rocher packet, by the way. I took off the lid. I didn't need it. Um, but I use this open, and then I've cut up a giant PVA. They call them PVA um, synthetic towels here in Australia. 
but you can find them at the auto shop. This one's for pets apparently, but it's the same thing. Um, they're not very expensive. They are really big. So what I've done is I've cut that one down to this and it's stained as hell <laughs> but it's still you know it does its job and it doesn't transfer onto your things so yeah I, I quite like this um, towel also my favorite thing 3M scotch tape blue painters tape this stuff is amazing I have had this roll for a little while but what I do is I cut off when I cut off bits and pieces and put them onto my dies and things like that I keep them because the tack is still there so I can have a roll last me forever um, and then I just keep them on here and I just take off what I need to you can even hear it's still got quite a bit of tack and then once it stops being tacky and useless you can throw it out it's easy but I love my 3M painters tape I think it's wonderful tweezers tweezers are the best I love my tweezers I've had these for several years but um, they are getting a little bit worse for wear so I may invest in a new pair of tweezers but in the meantime this is doing the job really well I think tweezers are a must uh, what else do I love I love my Ranger craft sheet I use that practically in every video now this is inexpensive it's not overly expensive it's about $20 I think from memory but don't quote me on it it's non-stick it's um, heat resistant you can use mixed media on it easy cleanup and then you just you can even cut it down if you want to I just roll mine up at the end of it I, I clean it down with my chamois and then I just roll it up and put it away and keep it you know rolled up nicely and protected but you of course if you have I don't have a craft room so I've always got to pack and unpack my crafty things so I just keep mine in its um, original packaging and I just roll it up and stick it in here and it does the job so I love my Ranger non-stick craft sheet I think it's a wonderful sheet I think I mentioned the silicone craft mat before if I haven't I'll mention it again this is a great size it's I think a seven no six and six by six inches it's also heat resistant and you can use it with some stamping techniques the mirror technique you can do that in your stamparatus with this you can use your misty whatever but this is great and I've also used this quite a lot with my um, hot glue gun um, this is fantastic and you can use hot glue gun on this too it's really good so I love those two things I have a heat tool is a must I have this heat tool from Stampin Up this is one of their more original ones I've had this since I first joined as a Stampin Up demonstrator about nine years ago now um, this is done by Watson Enterprise Company I'm not sure if they make the Wagners or whatever but I've heard they're very similar from this style and let me tell you it heats beautifully and I'm not going to change it for anything until it dies so I love my heat tool and that one was from Stampin' Up from a few years ago and my other favorite tools there's so much more but I can't go through them all but I like my pick-me-up from I think it's Silhouette I like how it's got a, like an extra little bit here a pointy bit and then it's got like a little spatula part and then it's got your putty at the end to pick up all your things um, what I can do with that is you can refill it with um, blue tack which is great so I love this thing so this is a great tool to have um, the Stampin Spritz bottles from Stampin Up these are fantastic you can fill these up with ink and alcohol and you can make your own alcohol sprays with it also you can use it with just water and just spritz your um, projects with that I quite like this and I use that off camera mainly but I do use it and I love it um, my other favorite crafty thing is my PVA glue I get a lot of questions about this this um, I bought from Lincraft but they also sell them at Spotlight and they come in a couple of sizes there's one smaller than this one and then I got this Lincraft was close to my home so I bought that about a year and a half or two years ago it's still going this is 500 mils and 
this lasts me a really really long time um, this can it bonds wood paper cardboard and fabrics it's actually like white but then it dries clear so I love this as my adhesive I think it's awesome and I use it on absolutely everything um, so this is this one from Lincraft this is another one that I bought from Spotlight because Lincraft closed down close to me and this is just crafters choice PVA glue um, and again this comes in a 500 mil so that's 250 this is the 500 mil bottle I bought these on special for literally like five bucks or three dollars and it lasts me a long time so they're very inexpensive and they last a long time so these are my favorite um, things like adhesives I just love them my last but not least favorite tool at the moment oh no I've got a couple more <laughs> the Tim Holtz retractable craft pick what I love is it's retractable it's a good paper piercer I use that to pick up gems and other things and what I love about it is it's retractable and it's done so you don't even have to go all the way you can go some of the way and you have a choice how much of the pick you put out and I love that it's safe um, so I love this retractable pick from Tonic Studios Tim Holtz range I love it love 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 <laughs> um, microfiber cloth great for cleaning but I use it also for my lovely makeup brushes I use these in every video and I talk about them but I do get a lot of questions I bought these from Kmart um, about uh, two months about a month and a bit ago or two months and they were very inexpensive to me the way they look is exactly the same as the picket fence ones they have the same kind of flex um, and they're super soft I use this quite vigorously I don't get any of the bristles coming off um, I think they're very well made I think if you can find these um, on Kogan's website you pay $20 for free shipping and these look exactly the same so I reckon they're made in the same factory in China somewhere and then multiple companies buy them and just rebrand them for themselves now this packet here because it has the larger brush cost me $12 for three and this cost me 10 bucks for three I didn't see the Kogan uh, one which has 10 brushes all they look like they're exactly the same size as the picket fence life-changing brushes which are about $90 here in Australia so if I were you I'd save your pennies and buy um, if you can find these that came up buy them or you can go online Kogan Amazon wherever eBay and find those ones there I think yeah save your pennies I think they do the same job to be honest and also these mini ink blending tools from Ranger they're also really good for your really large um, kind of projects that you need to um, do you know um, blending with so yeah so yeah microfiber cloth you can find these at any supermarket I bought a packet of three for like I don't know five bucks six dollars really inexpensive so yeah I use a variety of products I love crafting if I can save money I will um, and I just wanted to let you know too whatever I show you in my videos whatever I recommend I have personally bought them I personally like them and I will personally recommend um, with regards to cleaning your trimmer with the WD-40 I like that this is a plastic safe uh, lubricant it's a silicon lubricant you have to be careful because not all of these WD-40s are safe on plastic because you don't want that to degrade over time so because this is safe on plastic and on moving parts it's all the go for me um, Stampin' Up I'll just say it off the bat here does not recommend you doing these things at all this is my own <laughs> my own thing however um, I think this this really does increase the life of your stamp um, of your blades so I'll just do this again oh that's a score but check it out it actually does a really good job okay it's straight um, and you can get rid of the fuzzies as long as you keep cleaning it 
and then you change I change the blades once every six months just so you know I just wish though that at times that the blades were a little bit more hardy and lasted longer but six months of continual use is not bad um, I also love using this um, trimmer too um, and I use them mainly to cut my card bases and stuff but for my scoring and more um, accurate cuts I use this one I quite like it so I use both I have to say I use them both kind of equally but this one a little bit more and I love the way this is set up this is a really good setup and you have the arm that comes out till about this goes till about 14 and a half inches if you can see the ruler there this goes out till 14 and a half inches roughly so that's pretty good so yeah I hope you enjoyed my uh, video today with my favorite crafty things Feel free to answer any question, um, to ask me any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. But I just thought I'd address it because um, a lot of people are asking me, where did you get this? How did you do that? <laughs> and why do you use it? And so I'm happy to just, you know, do the video on it. So I hope you have enjoyed it. And if there's anything else you'd like to see, just let me know. I'll be happy to help out. Thanks for watching and see you again next time. Bye.